you, Jesus. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Anybody excited this morning? All right. That's about 27%. That's not too bad. Who's, let's hear some applause from those who are not excited. Uh, that's a trick question. Good to be in the house of the Lord. How many feel his presence this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's welcome our visitors here. We've got visitors in the house. And uh, I believe that you've walked into an environment where God is moving. If you're here today, it's because we prayed you in. <laughs> We, I've been praying for hunger. I've been praying for people that are hungry. That's the only qualification. I don't care where you're coming from. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care how bad of things you've done. You're in the presence of a Redeemer. Yeah. And he's looking for hunger. That's what he's looking for. That's what he's looking for. Thank you, Jesus. I am not going to be too long this morning. I thought I'd get some applause for that. Because <laughs> we're going to send the boys from the hood, the boys from the bridge. They are leaving on. They are leaving. On. They're leaving on a jet plane. Don't know what they'll be. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I can't. I can't sing that kind of song in church. I just. Oh my gosh! I don't even know if I should start on a message. Have you seen the progress on our building over on that side of the building? Yeah. 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 God's given us the provision. If you notice, we got our little fundraiser thermometer up. We got the little renderings of what we want to do. You know, just as we've been talking about, God wants to put new wine into new wine skins, right? He doesn't put old wine into old wine skins. So, so first the natural. God's given us new skin for our church here. That's what, that's, if you look at it, we've got new skin for our church. He wants, to, he wants to put something new in this place. But uh, if you see, we've got a goal. We want to start on this side, and then we'll work around the front. We want to really uh, to zazz up the front with a new siding. It, this had to be done uh, because moisture got into, our, into that brick and it's damaged our building. But uh, I just think because we, 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 want to, we want to do something new and a new presentation on the church. To do the entire, it's, a, it's somewhere around three hundred thousand um, dollars, and we've already started. You can see we've got about sixty plus thousand uh, enough to start. Um, now we've also uh, received a loan from the bank, uh, which uh, what's interesting is for about one hundred fifty thousand. So that'll get us to where we can do quite a bit. But we want to pay off that note quickly. Um, the good news is we, uh, not that long ago, sold our old church building. And the payment that we receive for that building actually will make the payment for the loan that we're taking. So we're, you know, so we're, we're ground zero. But we want to pay this off. So uh, if God speaks to you, um, you know, we don't, we don't pull for money in this church. We just don't. I mean, that's just not what we're about. But I believe there's blessing in giving. I do. I'm living proof of that. I believe it opens something up. And if you're if you're not sure, if you feel like man, God wants me to give a large amount, and you're just not sure about, it, and you want somebody to, to, to pray with you, you you call me. I'll pray with you, and I'll come into agreement with you. Yeah. But uh, God's doing some good things in the house. Amen. And uh, boy, we've got some we've got some testimonies in this house. There's. Uh, Few people uh, received the Lord last week into their heart. Uh, we've seen some miracles happening. We see a little trickle happening. We, we see a little trickle happening into this church. We've been looking for the hand of God. I told God, I wasn't going to be a pastor of this church unless I, He came with me, unless I saw His power. I said, if you could do it for Moses, if you could do it for Joshua, you can do it for me. You can do it for me because they're not here no more. And we need you just as much as they did back then. Amen? Amen. By speaking to anybody, get rid of that religious spirit. Don't bring it into this church. <laughs> we want freedom. We want the spirit of God to move in this house. That's what we want. 
Amen? Amen. Open up your Bibles to John chapter 7. Verse 37, verse 37. Can you go back that far, uh, Sarah? I think I told you 38. Go back to 37. It says, now on the final and most important day of the feast, that's the Feast of Booths, or B-O-O-T-H, Booths, or Tabernacles is what it is. Jesus stood, and he cried in a loud voice, if any man is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, who cleaves to and trusts in and relies on me, as the scripture has said, from his innermost being shall flow continuously springs and rivers of living water. But he was speaking here of the spirit whom those who believed, trusted, had faith in him, were afterward to receive, for the Holy Spirit had not yet been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified or raised to honor. Any time you see that he was not yet glorified, it means he'd not died yet. That's what that means. And how would he know, how many know that on the cross, It's an interesting word, glorified, speaking of his death. Because when he hung on the cross, that's where he conquered. That's where he triumphed, right there. <laughs> that's where it was. That's why it's important for us to die a death. I know you might feel like you're dying a death. You don't know what's going on. But in the midst of that, there's a triumph that's happening. Come on, anybody hearing me this morning? Look at the progression. There's a death, there's a burial, there's a resurrection, and then what? And then the Holy Spirit comes. Then the Holy Spirit comes. Am I looking at that progression right? Amen. Living water from your innermost being are gonna flow rivers of living water. There's something that needs to be flowing inside of you. That's what's happening. That's what we're tapping into. That's what we wanna dig into. Amen? Yeah. You know, interesting is that that feast of that he was at, said on the last day, it's called the Feast of Tabernacles. They're literally celebrating when they were in the wilderness and they had to put up temporary shelters for themselves. And they saw the delivering power of God. They were remembering it, the, the faithfulness of his hand. That's what that feast is about. The provision that he provided in the midst. Amen? They, they're recognizing him that he was the source. And what's interesting, on the final day of that feast, the priests go to the pool of Shalom and they draw water out of that pool and they bring it into the temple and they begin to pour it on the altar. That's what they do. They just begin to pour it all over. And it's a reminder that He's the one that quenches our thirst, but he's the one that provides the water. And it was right there and then, I believe that Jesus messed with the religious leaders. Because right while they're, they're doing that, remember it's on the last day, this is while they're doing it. He said, listen to me, come to me, all you who are thirsty. And out of your innermost being, are just going to flow rivers of living water. See, the priests were doing it in the temple. But what Jesus was about to do was about to turn his believers into the temple. Amen. Amen. Boy, that messed with them. Amen. At that feast, they're remembering what we had talked about before. It's in Ezekiel 46 on how the water began to rise in the temple and it got ankle deep and then it got knee deep and then it got up to the loins and then it became a river that they couldn't even ford. That's what Ezekiel saw in his vision. And that's what they were doing. That's what they're doing in the altar. You see, 
They're saying, they're saying this temple, but Jesus just said, it's going to be those that receive me it, from their innermost being. That's what's going to flow. It's going to be a river that begins to come up to the ankles and, and then the knees. It's interesting to me that those are the first two things it talks about. First the ankles, then the knees. Those always represent strength. If you, if you read it, that God wants to strengthen your ankles. There's scriptures about ankles. There's scriptures about knees. See, God wants to strengthen his church. We're not supposed to be defeated. When we come into the house of the Lord, God never called you to come to him to defeat you. He's got something planned for you. What's interesting, the next place it hits is the loins. And loins always represent reproduction. That's how I look at it. That's what it represents. Because he wants to multiply. That's what that God is a multiplier. That's what he does. I believe he wants to increase people. He loves people. He loves lots of people. He doesn't want to see people die. He wants them to live. Amen? <laughs> we're tough times, aren't we? Every day you turn on news, there's bad news. Now we're, I think Fauci's up to three masks now, isn't he? I'm not, I think I'm joking. Yeah, so we tried the first mask and now, no, I better not do the Fauci impression. <laughs> I, and I'm not, I wear a mask too. <laughs> I go out there and wear a mask. If you don't wear a mask, oh my gosh, you're in trouble. But I'm in the presence of the Lord. Here's my mask. Right there. That's what I rely on, the word of the Lord. I, I'm just, I just don't have the fear. I don't have the fear. I believe the church is going to cause the spread, but it should be the spread of the answer, of the solution. Amen. God wants to strengthen his church. Amen. Do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If any man destroys the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, and that is what you are. You're the temple. You're the one that contains those living waters. Amen? Amen. If you don't feel like there's rivers of living water in you, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. It's okay to start seeking it. Lord, what's going on? Why don't I feel it? Why don't I see power in my life? It's not, so, it's not supposed to be for a select few. It's anybody who believes. They're, it's there, but we gotta, we gotta dig for it now. Yeah. I've been sharing the scripture from uh, Genesis chapter 26. I just wanna read a couple of verses. It's when the Philistines had filled up the wells of Abraham With dirt, with earth, they filled up the wells. Isaiah began to redig them. It says in verse 18, then, then Isaac dug again the wells of water which had been dug in the days of his father Abraham. For the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. And then in verse 19, it says, Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found there a well of flowing water. You should highlight that word flowing. That literally means living or moving. It's moving. That's what flowing water is. And Philistines were always a constant nemesis of God's people. The Philistines well, were idolaters. It was easy for God's people to get contaminated and to take on the culture of the Philistines. And they would get in trouble because they hung around them. And, and even mighty men of God would get affected by the Philistines. Look at Samson. I mean, Samson was anointed. Samson was a miracle baby. I mean, an angel of the Lord appeared to Samson's parents, whose mother was barren. She wasn't even supposed to have it. And he said, you're going to have a baby. And you're going to dedicate it to me. I'm gonna, God's going to anoint him with great strength. So this was one that was anointed and called and birthed out of a miracle. And he fell to the influence of the Philistines. Amen. Oh, gosh, I gotta be quick. <laughs> Don't 
told me your medicine would be bad. <laughs> you know, me and my wife went out to dinner on Friday night. I wish she was here. Uh, and I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at her, and she goes, oh my gosh. I'm like, what's the matter? She's like, that lady that just went by, she had this long string of toilet paper that she, she was going past her seat. I don't, know, I don't know if it was on her foot or I don't know what it was. She's like, she's like it was like four feet long. And, she, and I don't, I'm not looking, you because know, if you look, then everybody's going, I said, she's like, I feel so bad for her. I said, well, sweetie, go tell her. <laughs> you think I should? I go, go, I go, I want to know. <laughs> go tell her. And of course, Lee could get, if I did it, I'd be in trouble. <laughs> Lee can do it, you know, this little Mississippi girl. <laughs> so she went and did it. So she went, and uh, what's funny is afterwards, she was so thankful, and you know, the two of them hit it off. And I got such a kick out of it, I'm like, I'm actually thinking of doing that myself, you know, you know what I mean? I'm gonna go get some toilet paper and walk around. <laughs> get my <myself> <laughs> See, Alan knows me, he knows I've been doing that. Just because I might get bored, you know. See, the young people, they do video games. Us, you know, from my, from my generation, we had to think of ways to kind of games. But you know, that's what we do. We come into church and we bring like this long string of toilet paper <laughs> into church, you know. We get, we get clogged up from the Philistines, from our culture. And, and somebody's got to tell you. There's things you got to let go of you, because we love you. We have compassion on you. But it's easy. That's what the Philistines do in our life. See, we don't think. I know that I myself am influenced by our culture. And I'm going to tell you what, there's a separation taking place. That's what's happening. It's not going to be hard to distinguish who's in the world and who's not. God is calling you out of the world. He's calling you out of some mindsets, to some things that you thought were okay. See, there's not supposed to be blurred lines in the kingdom of God. I know there's politics, and sometimes politicians have to compromise and do this and do that. I mean, there was this big compromise up in Washington this week. I don't know if you heard, but it was called the Equality Act, H.R. 5 or something like that. This is the most – it, it got through Congress. Next it goes to the Senate. It would horrify you. You need to check it out. You need to look at it. I'm thinking this – it is so wacky. It's demonic. It is demonic. Let's put it that way. And this is this is what we've fallen asleep as a church because it doesn't shock us anymore. This would shock us. But there's even much other things that should shock us, but they don't shock us. But God wants to clean. He wants to cleanse his church. That's what he wants to do because he wants to move. He wants to see... He wants, to, he wants his power to be seen because the world is lost, even the country that we're in right now. Amen. We're at a point where it needs the power of God. Amen. And people are going to come. They're going to need to be delivered. Amen. And they're going to need to be set free. Hallelujah. And there's going to be sicknesses that, that only, that no doctor will be able to heal. Only the hand of the Lord will be able to touch. That's what my cry is. Yes. That's what we want in this house. That's what's in you. God doesn't, the Holy Spirit doesn't move because we work ourselves up into a frenzy or because I tug on your emotions. He operates through holiness. He operates through repentance. We begin to say, Lord, let this stuff drop off of me. Stop chasing the things of the world. Begin to separate. If you're not sure what it is, begin to ask the Lord what it is. What it is. It's okay to start to pride in yourself with something that you've gotten used to because God wants to replace it. Amen? Amen. Oh, yeah, this is a shouting out, shouting out message here. Amen. Hallelujah. This is good news, I'm telling you. Good news. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anytime you look at when the hand of God begins, you go, I love the Old Testament because the Old Testament puts gives more meaning and more depth even to the New Testament. It gives you illustrations just like I just did. I just told you that when Abraham dug those wells 
the Philistines filled them up. That's, I feel like we're filled up with this dirt. We, and Isaac had to dig, and it's hard work. It's, it's hard getting dirt out. I can't imagine digging dirt out of a well. But it's said that he came against opposition while he tried to do it. But he knew, he knew there was miracles in that well. He knew there was living waters in that well. There's dirt in, in, in us, even in our soul, in our spirit, in our mind. We've been conditioned. But God says there's living waters. Dig, dig out the dirt. Dig it out. But throughout the Old Testament, it talked about whenever God moved mightily, it was, it, he had his people turn first. Turn away from that stuff. Because I'm going to clean you. I'm going to sprinkle clean water on you. And I'm going to pour my spirit out in you. And I'm going to bless you. God wants to bless. He's a God of blessing. Jesus. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 17 says, Son of man, when the people of Israel were living in their own land, they defiled it by the evil way they lived. To me, their conduct was unclean as a woman's menstrual cloth. They polluted the land with murder. I'm sorry, I didn't write this scripture. I'm just reading you the word. <laughs> like, you know, talk to the author if you want. Polluted the land with murder and the worship of idols, so I poured out my fury on them. You know, these Philistines, they were big worshipers of idols. We can defile our own land by the way that we live. And you might think, well, I don't, that's not the way I live. Well, I'm going to tell you why. The Bible says that the Antichrist spirit is already in the world. And there's only one thing that holds him back. And that's the spirit of God that's in his church. Amen. That's the, that, that means there's a responsibility. God's got you here for a reason. You're, 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 not, you're not supposed to be the problem. We're supposed to be the solution. Amen. Skip to verse 35. It says, then I will sprinkle clean water on you. And you will be clean. And your filth will be washed away, and you will no longer worship idols. And I will give you a new heart. Gosh, <laughs> you know, there's no one like me that wants this coronavirus over with. You know, so I can, we can go back to normal. But you know what? Maybe, maybe we, we're not supposed to go back to the things that we were doing before. You know, maybe they're being withheld from you. Ever think about that? Amen. Maybe there is a restraining taking place. I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you, and I will take out of your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart, and I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. This illustrates people being cleansed with water, and the Holy Spirit is in them. The Holy Spirit is likened to living waters, uh, living in us, as you know. But if you read down further in that chapter, as God begins to do that, blessings begin to flow. And f the famine ends. And, and uh, their lives are turned into a flourishing garden. They compare it to a garden of Eden. That's what awaits God's people. But in, in, in Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13, it says, My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and they have dug their own cisterns, which are, which are underground water tanks is what a cistern is, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. I think even that song we were singing, Brother Dave, was talking about us digging. We, 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 there's holes that we've dug that we try and fill them with things. We, we dig our own, but they're broken. They're, they're broken. They can't hold water. They cannot fulfill you. you. See, those are the two things that God has against us. That we've, we, we, we've forgotten who the source is. And we go after other things that fulfill us. Because there's tons of it in the world. Am I the only one that's chased those things? You can chase those things. In Jeremiah 2, if you read that, God's children were seeking life in everything but him. 
Read that chapter. That's what it's about. That's why he said that. Where have we put our hope in finding life? Where do we put it? Where do we place our attention? What are we chasing? That's our idol. We pour ourselves out looking for fulfillment, only to feel empty and drained, never satisfied, never fulfilled, like a broken sister. That's what that means. But we have living waters in us. And we gotta start taking steps. I'm gonna cut this short. I've got a lot more to say. But God required, we're to be doers, not just hearers of the word. There's things that's going to stir up those waters. The waters, they have to be in motion. I told you, I'm not going to tell the story yet, but most of you know my story about going over to Broad and Brown Street and being and reluctantly going to hand out flyers. And that was not what I wanted to do. I, I was not going to hand out flyers. Brown and Broad Street. I was, I was too dignified for that. But when I began to do it, something began to flow in me. <laughs> See, I made a connection. On Tuesday at prayer, someone came up to who wanted their son prayed for. And so we brought her up. I had the guys from the bridge surround her and begin to pray because I was stirring, I wanted to stir up the waters that are in these men. Amen. Amen. When, you, when you give, when you tithe, oh, Paul, I'm going to talk about that right now. I'm going to talk about it. You're stirring the waters. Praise the Lord. You're taking a step. Now you're letting something flow through you. When you decide to pray for someone, even when you don't feel like praying, you are tapping and you're, those waters be, are beginning to flow. When you decide to serve, when you decide, you know, I'm going to go, I'm going to clean the bathrooms, there's water that begins to flow. Amen. When you begin to say, you know, I'm not going to do that anymore, the waters begin to flow and they begin to move. Uh -huh. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. I know you probably want to hear a prosperity message. This is a prosperity Amen. message. Amen. It is. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know what? I, I can preach anything I want. I really can. I mean, there's sermons online. <laughs> you know. There's all that. I, I look at it. There's all that stuff. I'm like, Lord, I'm not going to do that. Uh -huh. Amen. You tell me what you want me to speak to people. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Amen. I don't care if they get that. It doesn't matter to me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I can be the ones that are hungry, that want to see change. And this is what he's telling me to tell you. Amen. <laughs> yeah, church people, I'm calling you preaching to the choir. I'm going to tell you what, if I'm susceptible to being influenced and conditioned by what the world does, uh -huh. so are you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And it's hard. Uh -huh. God wants to do something powerful. Yeah. Amen. These guys that are going to California, uh -huh. you know what's going to happen? Water's going to flow through. That's what's going to happen. You're stir it up. If you decide to say, I'm not going, well, fine. I'm not just going to sit there. Go ahead and let the Philistines <laughs> fill in the well. Because he's, they, they fill my well in. Uh -huh. And I've, I've had to dig it out. Amen. 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 But in that well, see, see, we've seen too much in this church. We've seen miracles. Amen. I mean miracles. church. When, when we become born again, if you don't have a desire to get rid of things out of your life, there's something wrong. But make me whole. I can't do it myself. But we need to strive for it. Lord, get those things out of my life that separate clog up the well of living water. Amen? Amen? Amen. 
Thank you, Lord. Sister, it, it, it is not over for you. It is not over for you. It is not too late. You just, you, sit, you just sit tight. Lord, right now, Father, Father, I see your hand all over this woman. Father, I thank you for a, my God, I thank you not only for a cleansing, Lord, but Father, I, I see a spirit that's going to be made whole. I see a wholeness coming. Father, things that were carved out of her life, Father, that she thought she'd never get back. Father, I thank you to even create, Lord, even a new clean spirit within her. Father, I shake off the dirt, I shake off the dust, Lord. Father, what's going to emerge, Lord, is something, even a holy vessel. And Father, I thank you, Lord, you're emptying her out. You're emptying her out, Lord, because you're going to fill her. You're going to fill her with something new. And Father, she's going to get off her eyes off of things that she's had her eyes on. Things that she's relied on. Things that she typically runs to. She's not going to run to those things anymore. This is a new day. This is a new day for my sister. Lord, I see your spirit all over her. Hovering around her. She thought that you forgot her. But you haven't. Father, I speak new life into my sister right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Brother Toby, come here, brother. something in you that nobody can relate to. You'll do anything. You'll give your life. You'll pour your money. You'll, it doesn't matter because you've you got a gratitude. That's what's in this man. That's why I love this guy. That's right. We connected, we connected with Mario Morello, if any of you have heard of him. He's out in California old tent meetings. Filling these tent meetings. I don't know if you've heard. He thinks that even our tent might be too small now because of the crowds that they're he was talking about, they were filling this tent up in the middle of California, in the middle, middle of COVID, and they're seeing people come that are hungry, and they need deliverance, and they need salvation, and they need miracles, and those things are happening under that tent. And I was listening to it on TV, and he said, our tent's not big enough. It's only getting five or 600 people under it. And I knew we had a tent. Our church owns a tent that can get 1,500 under it. And so we gave that that tent to his ministry to use for as long as he needed to. And uh, boy, they, they got excited. They came and visited us and they said, something's going on in this church. What's going on in California, we can sense it right here, right in this cornfield. I don't know what's all going on, but I just know there's a hunger. And when they came out, they, they connected with Toby and his men. We're going to send these men out to go help in California. That's where they're going in a few minutes. Where are you flying out? Buffalo. That's why i got to get them out of here. These guys wanted to come to church just before, you know. I love that. I think these guys were out and were cleaning yesterday, too. Would you come out and clean? These guys came out and cleaned the church. Did you get that, you get that text message that that woman sent you? The, the one that on the Facebook or the Facebook no, she was thanking the guys from the bridge because yeah, well, he gets that. So they're going to go there and they're going to they're going to pour themselves into this ministry. We're going to we're going to let the living waters corporately flow through this house. We're going to sow into that ministry out there because we want revival. You know, we don't want to just sing about it. 
I could sing about revival. I could probably sing 18 different revival songs from the 30 plus years I've been here. I want to see revival. I want to see revival. Amen? So this is a little bit about the bridge. So Toby got this. I'm sorry, it wasn't a text message, right? It's a Facebook post that he got from a neighbor. This is one of our elderly neighbors, a couple of houses down. I'd like to express my gratitude to the men of the bridge for their un unending kindness. I moved to Batavia, being a senior citizen, it was a difficult process. A gentleman approached me with a lawnmower and asked if I would like him to mow. Uh, I asked how much, and he said no charge. That started a series of endless kindness. A group of men raked leaves, removed branches from my yard, and shoveled my snow. This group of men are a gift from God. They anticipate my every need and are always here to help. Thank you so much, and God bless the men of the bridge. Sally Ray. Sometimes when you uh, you keep pushing and pushing, and you get to the point where there's no more pushing you can do, you get to rest. And um, it really hit me this morning, um, the, the grandness of this moment. And um, I'm sure glad that I didn't quit when the reasons to quit were stacking up. I sure am glad when the city of Batavia told me it's impossible to do what you're doing, that I didn't listen to the voice of the enemy. And I listened to what God had told me and the mission that he had given me. Because these men, Dale and, and Charles and Chad and Kelly and Carl and Mark wouldn't be standing here. We need to start listening to God's voice and not buy into the lies that the enemy wants to do this. So I'm blessed to be here. Um, a little over a year ago, we opened up the house and we're going to California. So I'm um, very excited about this moment and what God has done. Um, if you want to follow our journey uh, to California, we have a Facebook page, The Bridge Addiction Recovery, and like the page or follow it and it'll give you updates. I'm going to try to share videos and pictures every day, um, testimonies of what we're doing and how God has used us. So. Anybody? Um, I just had hip replacement surgery on last Friday, and I was the uh, first hip surgery they had with that was same, same same day service. So I went in, got it changed, and I was home the same day. And um, and I had a little incident where I ripped some stage, a bunch of stitches out, and uh, went back, and they, they hooked me up, and I got staples instead of stitches, which is worse. But, <laughs> but um, what I wanted to say that for is that God covered it, and the two guys that worked on me have treated me like we're family. The doctor calls me, texts me, and makes sure everything's okay, and I'm like, man, I must be in a small town, because the doctor like knows my name and wants to know what's going on. I couldn't get a ride to the hospital for a visit, um, and he said, uh, don't worry about it, we'll get you here. After he fixed my stitches, he took me home. What doctor gives the patient a ride home? There's all kind of liability in there, but don't tell him I told him. <laughs> but, uh, so I, I'm just saying how the favor of God is over over all of our lives and how people just do things for us that they just normally wouldn't do. And that's why I know I'm in the right place. So I just wanted to give that little testimony. And uh, I'm hoping to be uh, back on the Buffalo Bills when I get back, you know, from certain. Father, stir up the living waters that are in them. And Father, even as they serve, Lord, even as they set their hands to serve you, Lord, Father, I thank you, you are a rewarder, Lord. And 
Father, we tap into that which they're doing out there. And Father, we say, be it unto us in the name of Jesus. I speak an anointing over even their spirits. I speak an anointing of the Lord and empowerment in the name of Jesus, Father. Equip them, Lord. Father, they're not going just representing themselves. They're going, Lord, as your own ambassadors, Lord. Father, I come against the enemy of their souls. I come against condemnation and accusation, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, let them go in the power and in the confidence of you, Lord. Give them the provision that they need, Lord. And Father, light a fire in their spirits, Lord. Light a fire in their spirits, Lord. Let healing come to their hands. Let deliverance come out of their mouths, Lord. Let stability, Lord, permeate even their being, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, right now I declare the enemy of darkness will never get these guys back. Father, I declare, Lord, the table has been turned. And Father, even as you spoke, or even as you spoke through Ezekiel, and you told the dry bones to arise, Lord, Father, I see, Lord, part of the army of God rising up. And Father, we send these boys out to battle right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We stand to our feet. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for even this place, Lord, that we can come and meet with you. That we can feel your presence, Lord. we can leave transformed, Lord, by the renewing of our minds. Renew our minds, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you need prayer for something, the altar is open. It would be my honor to pray with you. I don't care if you need healing in your body, if there's somebody in your life that needs prayer, if there's a circumstance, it doesn't matter to me. If you've never received the Lord in your heart, and you need it, you need that. Don't spend one more day without the Lord. You come. You come to the throne of grace, to the mercy seat, to your Redeemer, to your Savior. Amen? Heavenly Father, Lord, I just speak a blessing over this house, a blessing over your people. And Lord, I speak healing where health is needed. Lord, as we leave here, let us take with us, Lord, the anointing and the power of God. Let it cling to us. Let it be part of us. Let us not just talk about it. Let it be in our being. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you guys. God be with you. Be strong in the Lord. We're going to be praying for you. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Clap. God bless you.